Three months later, we are taking a look at the Apple Pencil 1.5. This USB-C Apple Pencil is interesting. It's like Apple took the first generation model and tried to address every single complaint people had about it. Don't like that it's glossy? Make it matte, like the Apple Pencil 2. Don't like that you have to plug in to charge it? Put a USB-C port on it. Don't like that you have to use lightning? Put a USB-C port on it. People lose the top when they take it off to charge? Just make it a sliding top. In fact, this pencil is really a nice blend of features from the Apple Pencil 1 and the Apple Pencil 2, which is why I call it the Apple Pencil 1.5. But they did this while also reducing the price below both models. This comes in at $79 USD, and the version 1 comes in at $99, and the version 2 comes in at $129, so it's significantly cheaper while giving you most of the Apple Pencil experience. When this pencil came out in October, it seems like no one was discussing whether or not it was a good or a bad product. Everyone was talking about how confusing the Apple Pencil lineup supposedly was now. So I wanted to look at the Apple Pencil 1.5 as a product and not worry as much about where it fits into the Apple Pencil lineup. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the review. All right, here, it's nice there's no plastic on these anymore. Pull that guy off. Okay, set you there for a moment. All right, got our super useful documentation that's gonna go right in the recycling. And now we are on to the Apple Pencil itself, which is wrapped in, I don't know what this is, paper, which is fine. And here it is. This is the Apple Pencil 1.5, as I call it. it has that nice little USB-C port when you pull up the, what would be the eraser. And there you go. All right, next up, let's go ahead and get this thing paired. Of course, that's gonna require our USB cable here. So let's go ahead, pull up the eraser thing. Somewhat awkwardly plug that in. Plug that in here. And Look at that. Like magic, it is paired to this iPad. This is probably the iPad I'm going to mostly use this with. Take this out, try it out. Scroll around. Okay, so looks like hover is working as we would expect. Oh, look at that, is that my blog? That's crazy. And of course, magnetically store, but not charge with this one. Important thing to note, does not charge this way. But yeah, looks like we are paired and we are connected. This model supports the core features that the other Apple Pencil models do, including low latency and tilt, but not pressure sensitivity. The Pencil 1.5 also supports Apple Pencil Hover, which is supported on the M2 iPad Pros. Here's a list of the supported devices for the Apple Pencil 1.5. It's basically every iPad with USB-C. On the positive side, this pencil preserves the core Apple Pencil experience. I've been using the stylus for days as I normally would, writing notes and documentation, drawing diagrams, using Scribble. 
hover works great. It all just works, as you would expect. The matte finish is as nice here as it is on Apple Pencil 2. It might even be a little more matte, if that's a thing. For a product like this, wireless charging would have been the ideal solution. However, the next best thing is to use USB-C. Lightning was great in its day, but we've moved on beyond it. And it's always nice to see another Apple device move on to USB-C. I just said how nice USB-C is, but it's kind of a pain to have to go find a cable every time I want to pair or charge this thing. Apple got a lot of crap for having the Pencil 1 plug into the iPad to charge, but you gotta admit, it was convenient as hell. If you carry a nicely organized bag, like I do, you can have a USB cable in there, but other than that, you're kind of gonna have to fish for one every time this thing needs to charge. The lack of double tap compared to Pencil 2 is more annoying than I thought it would be. The hover feature is nice, because I get to know what mode I'm in when I'm writing, but without double tap to quickly switch me to the mode I want, it actually makes hover a little less useful. So while this pencil does have some shortcomings, like every other product, there's no such thing as a perfect product, I think it's actually a really good Apple Pencil. Especially if you have a USB-C iPad and you're maybe not interested in art so much and want to use it more for productivity. You can save yourself a few dollars while getting most of the core Apple Pencil experience, which to me seems like a good thing. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you agree with this review? Am I totally off base? Is this thing stupid? Should Apple have never released it? As usual, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you very much. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel on your way out, that would be much appreciated. And make sure you ring the bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. And with that, I will see you in the next video.